Hello everyone, this is Zephyrin, and this is part 8 of the Mastering Mind Super Series, and the first part of the intermediate level, so that's exciting. Today we're going to be looking at arguably one of the most important concepts in all of Minesweeper in terms of solving patterns, and it is known as reduction. So I figure I'll start off by just showing some examples so that you can truly grasp the power of this concept. So let's get into it. All right, so here's our first example. We're going to be looking down here, and at first glance, it looks like there's nothing we can really do here, but we can use the power of reduction. So what reduction basically does is it allows certain numbers to act like other lower numbers. If we look at this two here, we see that there's a mine um, right next to it that it touches, and this mine allows this two to act like a one. So what we do is we pretend that this mine doesn't exist. So this is just basically open area here, and this turns into a one. So we're basically just subtracting the amount of known mines around a number, pretending that those mines disappear, and then the difference between the original number and the known mines around it becomes what the number acts like now. So again, two here, we have one mine, so we basically forget that this exists, but we also subtract one from the two. So now this two basically acts like a one if we ignore this mine. So if we think about it that way, then suddenly we have a one two pattern here. This acts as a one if we ignore the mine, and this is a two. So we can actually go ahead and put a flag here and continue. So basically the power of reduction lies in its ability to transform certain logical situations into pattern-based situations and more complicated pattern situations into more simpler pattern situations. So let's get into another example. All right, so here's another example. We're gonna be looking over here. So as you can see, we have two fours and there's, there's really not much we can do. But if we apply the rules of reduction, let's start by looking at this four. It has three mines around it. We pretend that these three mines don't exist, so this is just um, nothing. These three tiles act as nothing, but we subtract the three from the four. So now this four becomes a one, essentially. And again, we pretend that there's nothing here. And then we look at this four. It has these two mines around it. So 4 minus 2, this 4 acts like a 2 now. And again, these two mines basically disappear. So now what we have is all of this area is open. And we just have a 1 and a 2 on a flat wall. So then we can continue um, the 1, 2 pattern. We would have a mine there. And then we just can keep going from there. All right, so here's another example. And I got pretty lucky when generating this board because there are actually four instances of reduction just within this area here. So just to show you how common this can be and how useful it is, I'm going to go through all of them. So let's start over here. So we have a 2 and a 3, which isn't a pattern necessarily. Um, normally if we had a 3, it would just be those three, but there's a mine here, so that doesn't work. But we can use the principles of reduction. So this 2 with this 1 mine acts as a 1. This mine basically just vanishes. And this 3 has this mine, so it acts as a 2 now with this mine vanished. So now we have a 1 and a 2 and a flat wall because these two act as just not being there. So we basically just reduce this situation into a 1 and a 2 on a flat wall. So on the side of the 1, of the reduced 1, is safe and on the side of the reduced two is a mine. Another example right here. There's actually, this is kind of a double example. We have this two right here with this mine. So this vanishes and this becomes a one. And already we have a one one pattern now up against a um, edge of the board right here. So we can already just open this tile because now it's a reduced one one. But I also wanted to show we can take this from another angle. So this three has this one mine, so X is a two now. This vanishes to now it's a one two on a flat wall. So you can basically 
you can really just see how common uh, this principle is. Another example similar to this one, over here we have a 3 with the mind, so that turns into a 2, and we have a 2 with the mind, so that turns into a 1. Both of these vanish, and we're just left with a 2 and a 1 on a flat wall essentially, so just like that. And then the final example, you don't really need to use it because you could uh, just solve this normally like that. But if we're looking here, we see that this 2 re reduces into a 1, since there's 1 mine, 2 minus 1, this mine vanishes. So now we're just left with a 1, 2, 1 pattern up against a perpendicular wall. This is a good review. So we can just treat it as such, a 1, 2, 1 with the perpendicular wall here. If we just pretend that this 2 is a 1 and this mine isn't there, just like that. All right, so one final example here. So here there's actually a few more instances of reduction just in this tiny little area. We have this 2 and a 3. Both are reduced by 1. The 2 has one mine there, the 3 has one mine there. So you forget about these two being there, and you get a 1 and a 2 on a flat wall. So just like that, and I can't place a mine for some reason. There we go. Um, and then we have a 4 and a 2, but the 2 is reduced by 1 because there's a mine right here. So this actually becomes a 4-1 pattern, a 1 here and a 4 here. This doesn't exist, so we can just go ahead with the pattern, just like that, and boom. And there was another instance here before um, before I did the 4-1 pattern. This 2 is reduced by 1, this 2 just remains, so you have a 1 and a 2 here on a flat wall essentially, so reduction is so common, it's all over the place. It's very useful in situations that don't look possible to solve by patterns. You can reduce them into a simpler pattern. And again, as I mentioned before, instances that are logical can become pattern based just by using this. And one thing I just want to highlight is that reduction isn't essential. Like you can still think through any instance where you could use reduction with logic, but it's just so useful because it just simplifies everything. And especially if you're trying to solve quickly, you can just turn these complicated situations into more basic things. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching.